The bird man squawked again and began flapping his wings manically. Feathers started to fill the air. A strong breeze started to blow from somewhere. The air was thick with blackbird dander now. I was choking on it. A swirling storm of blackness. A crow cried from somewhere far away. And suddenly, a bright light filled my eyes and my body was thrown backwards. The environment around me was still black, but it was a different kind of black. Like, nighttime black. And then I saw the stars and the moon and realized I was falling from the sky. I saw buildings getting closer and closer and there I saw my apartment, then me, on my couch. I drew closer and closer. I connected and I became myself. I sighed deeply, got up and walked over to the fridge. I didn't even realize I was doing it. One of those automatic things that you just do when you're hungry, I told myself. I grabbed a snack and started munching on it. A text binged in on my phone and I grabbed it out of my pocket. It read, Hey girl, there's this great party happening on Friday. Don't make other plans. Perfect, I thought. All I have to do is tell Stacy I'm not coming, stay home Friday, and my relationship would be saved. I started typing a response. You know I'll be there. No, no, that's not what I wanted to write. I moved to delete the words, but to my horror, my thumb moved straight to the send button. Sent. Oh God, no. I tried to move my arm to stop the text, cancel the plan, but I couldn't. My body walked over to the couch, all the while I was trying as hard as I could to turn back and pick up that phone. Nothing happened. My body kept moving around, ignoring my every attempt at stopping myself from going to that party. Icy realization hit. I would have to relive the whole damn thing. Like watching a slow motion train wreck unfold. Knowing how to avert the crisis, but completely unable to do anything. Let me tell you, fear without adrenaline is a strange feeling. To be honest, they were all strange feelings. I wasn't able to move my body, but I could feel everything. My body stubbed its toe, my body got scared, my body got drunk, and I felt it. When Josh kissed me, ugh, I felt it. I tried to treasure every single moment of the last time I slept with him. I knew this time, it'd be the last. But it was difficult when I knew that the next day, I would go to the party and break both our hearts. When I locked eyes with Eric at the party, I felt that too. I felt the excitement, the warm glow of the alcohol, the way my body reacted when he touched me, and I felt the hangover, the panic, the shame in the morning after when I woke up in his dirty apartment on the mattress on the floor and realized what I had done. The profound anxiety as I knew my body was debating in its head whether to tell Josh, the pain of having to tell him, and the heartbreak when he told me it was over. It was way worse the second time around. That freaking bird tricked me. The week leading up to the infamous night in Club 97 was unbearable. The closer the time drew, the more I tried to resist it. The everyday actions before that night made me want to vomit. Every meal eaten, TV show watched, hours slept, was a living nightmare. Getting ready hours before was the worst, however. Putting on my makeup, slipping into that too tight dress, where I was drunk but unable to do anything about it. As I walked up to the club, I saw something odd. The sign no longer read Studio 97. It now read Studio Zero, with the lights inside the Zero blinking, on and off, sporadically. I had no idea what that meant and I didn't want to find out, but I continued on unwillingly inside. The booming music and frantic dancing of my fellow clubgoers, 
sent waves of pain and discomfort to my head. The music died down. Screaming internally, I was carried across the floor to the bathroom, where it had all started. Why hadn't I just left? Or at least gotten a drink? When the door swung open, however, I was greeted with a different sight than the one I had seen the first time. The lights were now a dark blue. The floor was cracked and stained. The chrome fixtures grimy and disused. Some of the stall doors hung off their hinges, and the water puddled in the sink was a sickly yellowish color. From the now familiar final stall came quiet sounds. I tried taking a step forward. It worked. I took another. The same result. I was in control again. Instantly, I turned to leave, but found the door was gone. Only a blank, soot-stained wall. Something about the situation seemed disquietingly familiar. Right as I made the connection, the final stall swung open and I heard a sickening, wet thwop as something hit the floor. The slimy voice that greeted me sent shivers down my spine. One will cut to learn. These payments can't go on forever. I whirled around and saw it. The slug, worm, man thing from the hotel room. It was sliding out of the stall and leering towards me. Its head stuck out almost offensively on that long neck that protruded from its lumpy, misshapen body. Kuthka is disposable compared to the others. He answers to the ones above. He had you fooled, didn't he? Him and his little gains. I struggled for words, but all I could manage was a thin gasp of fright. The eyes seemed to pulse in their sockets, empty black pools which absorbed all light. He only does that with the messengers, so he can have his fun. Hand delivering it is never preferable to getting poor mortals like yourself to do it for you. The wall seemed to be shifting behind me, bending and pulsing against my back. I tried to ignore it. Time skipping is easy for ones like us. It only took moments to locate whatever line you were on. Anyway, I've grown sick of dead meat. Where's the enjoyment if you can't feel its struggle as it slides down your throat? He opened his mouth as his eyes rolled back into his head, causing a black, oil-slick tongue to loll out between his teeth. It opened a small mouth of its own, which released an ear-splitting screech that reverberated around the room. It lashed out at me as a viper. Jumping out of the way, I fell to the floor as it smacked against the wall with a dull thud. The creature rolled, squelching as it went, towards the corner where I lay. Just then, the wall shimmered and buckled as a black shape flew through it at lightning speed. A blur of black wings. Just as the tongue struck towards me again, I saw a long, thin shape rise up and enter in the soft flesh just below the creature's neck. It shrieked in pain and rolled back just as the shape withdrew. Looking up, I saw oily black blood dripping from the end of a bird's beak. Kutka? Before I could do anything else, he stabbed down again, piercing the blob across its neck again. It hissed and clacked its teeth together at him, but its eyes betrayed its fear. It tried rolling forward, pinning him underneath it, but he was too fast, stabbing him in the stomach this time. A sea of black cascaded out of the wound, washing over the floor like a wave. One last stab to the neck, head attached, flying across the room and smacking into the wall, leaving a black stain as it slid slowly down. A feathered hand grabbed my own and lifted me to my feet. I was dirty and covered with black splotches. Pulling me to the center of the room, Kutka stared at me, his head cocked sideways. You lost your bet, little one. I remembered the changed number from the outside of the club. 
he continued. Your wish still entrapped you in the game. He ran out of time long ago. A shiver ran down my spine as I stared at him, the black blood dripping onto the floor from the end of his beak. But, in the end, I have to thank you. I stared at him in disbelief. The only way the worm leaves his room is to collect at the end of the bet. If you hadn't failed, he wouldn't have left. And then I wouldn't have been able to kill him. I still had no idea why he was thanking me. Now that the worm is dead, I have moved up into his place. I will be taking his spot in the hierarchy. I felt the wall shifting behind me again. So, thanks to you, I have risen up. He cocked his head again. Still, you lost the game. I should kill you, but I will not. The music returned outside. Leave, little one. Just because I let you go now, does that mean I will have the same feelings later? <laughs> With that, he shoved me towards the wall. I tripped over my own feet and felt a cool sensation, as if I was passing through something. Before I knew it, I was landing on my back in the hallway, hard techno music blasting from nearby. Getting to my feet, I pulled the bathroom door open. The red light greeted me, along with the shiny chrome fixtures and clean floor. All stall doors were open, revealing no one inside. I stumbled out of the hallway and across the dance floor, eyeing some of the people as I passed. I saw a Middle Eastern man dancing wildly in the center of the floor, a man in a suit holding a briefcase, pushing through the crowd. At the bar, a young woman with two hive heels and a skimpy black dress was ordering a drink. I stepped out into the night dreamily blanking my eyes and heading back towards the direction of home. A loud noise erupted overhead. Looking up, I had just enough time to see a crow diving towards me, releasing something and disappearing into the night sky. A note. I unfolded it, reading it by the glowing lights of the club. It read, Ready for round two, 